All right, um, we're set up at a KOA in Silver City, New Mexico. This is our first stop since uh, moving out of storage, and I haven't had a chance to dewinterize this thing yet, so I wanted to show you on this camper, and this will probably be very simpler, uh, simple or similar, sorry, to many other campers uh, that have uh, this type of rigging. Uh, a few things may be specific to Rockwood, but um, some will not. So I've got uh, antifreeze in my system. I also have it in my freshwater tank. Not sure if you can see that or not. There's a little bit down in here. There you can see, I think, the, the pink. Uh, so I need to get all this out, but I don't want any water to go through my hot water system at all. I still have this set in the bypass mode for winterizing. So the cold water line going back into the tank here is shut off. It's turned at an angle to the pipe. The hot water line, the red line, is still shut off. And then the bypass valve, which allows water to come in this way, up, and that way, is on so that water will not go back into those lines. It's going to be very similar for a lot of people. So I'm going to leave that shut off until I get all the antifreeze out because I don't want any going into the uh, hot water tank at all. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, part a little bumping here, is you see I keep my this filter uh, holder. I take out the filter um, before winterizing, and you see it's pink. It's got water, uh, some antifreeze in it. So I'm going to take this off and dump it. That'll be just a little less antifreeze to worry about, and then. Really all I'm going to do is turn on the water pump inside the camper and I'm going to flush that out. I'll go ahead and hook up the uh, sewer connection until I see no more pink in the lines. Once that's done, and that's really about as easy as it gets, I'll go ahead and hook up my freshwater city water connection up here. And then when I turn that on, the first thing that it's going to do is to go over and fill up my hot water tank. I'll open up the release valve here, pressure valve, and when water starts coming out of out of the uh, overflow, right, yeah, then I know that I've got a full tank of water for the hot. I'll shut that valve off. And then I'll go ahead and run some hot water and cold water inside. Um, I may even just go ahead and put a little bit more water after all the pink is coming out of the lines inside in the uh, sink, both sinks and the toilet and the shower. I may just go ahead and put in a little more uh, fresh water into the fresh water fill. That'll go into the tank underneath and flush any residue out in there. I'll run some more water, let it pump out, and I'm just after getting rid of all that pink. The pink antifreeze, this is human safe, so you should not have to worry about it. So let me get a few things done here and I'll come back and uh, we'll see how it comes out. I hope this wind isn't bothering the video. Now, uh, with your, if you have a filtration system like this, you should have a, a white handle like this. It's got a circle. It goes up and it slides up over these uh, tongues on the on the filter, and that's used to break loose your filter. So I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of luck doing this, showing you. But I did put a small container underneath because you'll get a little bit of leakage here. Uh, so I want to catch it in here. I'll take that out and dump it. 
an additional item to take care of while you're doing this before you turn your hot and cold taps on uh, to drain the antifreeze out of the system uh, you've got these just like at home you have filters uh, that catch some of the sediment and stuff this is a great time to take these apart and go through and just wash out your your filters make sure there's no junk in there and when you drain these go ahead and leave this filter off at the time in both the, uh, the sink and the kitchen and the one in here and I don't believe there may be a filter on your shower right here I'm not real sure I may take that off and just check it alrighty I am going to flush out my water tank Get my little handy dandy flush reducer thing here and uh, I'm gonna get that up in there there you go See all the crap we're getting out of here. Still a lot of scale. Get back in there. Get a good flush going here. Now I'm tilted down. Oops. I'm tilted down this way. So we're going to see how much stuff we can get out, because I'm actually leaning this way. What fun! Hey! Alright, we got the, uh, got the water running clear. I almost had to do a tank on that, and uh, the reason for that probably is I left my antifreeze in the freshwater tank when we traveled, so it splashed all around in there. And I had to almost fill up the freshwater tank to get that out. So now we're going to go ahead and change our valves and turn those on. Okay, those are facing in line with the hoses and then the bypass valve. I am going to turn that off. So that is closing the bypass valve. Alrighty, and we'll go ahead and turn on our city water. And what you're going to hear, not sure if you can hear it or not, that is filling up. The first thing it's going to do is go over here and fill up our hot water tank. So when the water starts coming out the top up there on the blow off valve, we've filled up the hot water tank. You never ever want to turn on your hot water heating source, electric or gas, if there is uh, no water in your tank. You will ruin those elements. And there we go. So our overflow is full. Flip her down and shut it. We'll go in and run some hot water through, blow out the lines, and we have successfully dewinterized.